I'm going to debunk the Watchmen movie plot holes listed on Fanboy and the Cinema Spotlight blog. Many of these so-called plot holes are actually plot contrivances. Number 1. Dr. Manhattan could have teleported all of America's and Russia's nuclear weapons to the moon or into outer space faster than anyone could possibly notice. The Watchmen movie relies so heavily on Dr. Manhattan's emotional detachment and social passivity that the only proactive decision he ever makes is building free power plants for America with Ozymandias. The movie continually tries to convince us that John Osterman is too indecisive to take an active role in international politics even when he has the power to do so. From his interactions with President Nixon to his relationship with Laurie, the movie portrays him as a reactive character who rarely makes decisions out of his own free will. If President Nixon hadn't asked Dr. Manhattan to intervene in the Vietnam War, he probably would have done nothing to change the outcome of the war. We see him try to convince Laurie that all his emotional reactions are predetermined, even though he has the power to see into his own future. The movie wants us to believe that directly intervening in the Cold War is simply beyond Dr. Manhattan's emotional capacity. And even though Dr. Manhattan has the capacity to relinquish America and the Soviet Union of their nuclear weapons by simply teleporting those weapons out of their reach, doing so would go against all of his previous character development. John is just too passive of a character to make that kind of decision. By ensuring that such an idea never even pops into his mind, the movie also makes John appear less intelligent than we would expect a PhD-wielding scientist to be. However unlikely it may be for a well-trained scientist like John to passively wait for other people to formulate solutions to the global problems he cares about, all his decisions are consistent with his character development and none of his decisions violate the rules of the narrative. Number 2. Dr. Manhattan didn't do anything about Rorschach's journal. Whether or not the fact that Dr. Manhattan did nothing about Rorschach's journal is a plot hole depends on whether or not Rorschach managed to convince the world that Ozymandias was the mastermind behind the global onslaught of energy bombs. At the end of the movie, we never find out whether or not the publication of Rorschach's journal held any sway over the world's opinion on Dr. Manhattan's possible involvement in the global massacre. If the movie had ended with the US Congress conducting an investigation into the actual cause of the intrinsic field explosions and then concluding that Dr. Manhattan hadn't attacked the world with energy bombs, then Dr. Manhattan's failure to stop Rorschach from delivering his journal to the New Frontiersman would have been a plot hole. Dr. Manhattan could have foreseen how Rorschach's journal would have undone Ozymandias' plan for world peace and him doing nothing about the journal after having seen the world's future reaction to it would contradict all of his previous character development. According to the movie's world-building logic, the world realizing that Dr. Manhattan was not responsible for the intrinsic field explosions that took the lives of millions would have led to the USSR waging a nuclear war against America. Dr. Manhattan's return to Earth by the end of the movie and his decision to not reveal Ozymandias' diabolical plan for world peace to the general public suggest that Dr. Manhattan would have stopped Rorschach's journal from reaching the New Frontiersman if he saw the consequences of such an event with his clairvoyance. But because the movie ended before we got a chance to see what happened after the Frontiersman published Rorschach's journal, we are forced to conclude that this event wasn't a plot hole. Had the movie's runtime extended beyond the time when the Frontiersman published the claims that Rorschach made in his journal, then this could have been a plot hole depending on whether or not the leaders of the Cold War believed those claims. And if leaders of the Cold War did in fact believe the claims Rorschach made in his journal, then Dr. Manhattan's failure to take action at that point would only be a plot hole if the tachyons were still blurring his clairvoyant vision. In our video on how to fix Watchmen's plot holes, we explained the fact that the movie never explained how and to what degree Ozymandias used tachyons to block Dr. Manhattan's precognition is itself a plot hole. The link to that video is in the description below. Number 3. US government should have created super soldiers using the same technology that created Dr. Manhattan. The movie never suggests that the American government had an interest in creating super soldiers through the same experiment that created Dr. Manhattan. Plot holes can only arise from a story's own internal logic. 
The American government's interest in super soldiers is beyond the scope of this movie's story. The US government's decision to not attempt to create super soldiers with Dr. Manhattan's powers does not in any way contradict any of the movie's rules or any of its characters' motivations, even though it makes the story feel contrived and unrealistic. Number 4. Dr. Manhattan leaves planet Earth at the end of the movie, but nobody notices that he left the planet. After discovering that his ex-girlfriend, Jane Slater, has cancer, John teleported himself to the moon where he was soon found by the American government. Since the US government had managed to find Dr. Manhattan the first time he left Earth, it stands to reason that they would find him again if he decided to leave Earth once again. At the end of the movie, we see Richard Nixon attempt to make peace deals with the Soviet Union after concluding that Dr. Manhattan was responsible for the global intrinsic field explosions. Because both the US and Soviet Union concluded that Dr. Manhattan was responsible for the worldwide energy bomb attacks, even though those explosions took place after he left Earth, it stands to reason that both these governments would conclude that Dr. Manhattan could still present a threat to the human species, even if they can't detect his presence on Earth. By having the leaders of these two countries conclude that Dr. Manhattan created intrinsic field explosions across the world after having left Earth, the narrative suggests that the leaders believe Dr. Manhattan can attack the Earth at any time while in outer space. Whether or not anyone noticed that Dr. Manhattan left the Earth at the end of the movie is an open-ended question the movie never answers. According to the movie's logic, whether or not anyone noticed that Dr. Manhattan left the Earth at the end of the movie wouldn't change the fact that, by that point, the leaders of the Cold War decided to establish peaceful relations with each other to deal with the threat they thought Dr. Manhattan posed to their respective nations. Number 5. Blaming the death of millions of people across the world on Dr. Manhattan would not bring about world peace. The Watchmen comic was published in 1987, but the Soviet Union ended in 1991, and so did the global fear of nuclear annihilation. Whether or not the worldwide fear of nuclear war has been somewhat rekindled in recent years is beside the point. The fall of the Soviet Union had made a nuclear war between America and Russia so unlikely that it had not been a serious concern in international politics for almost three decades since the USSR's collapse. If the remainder of Watchmen's history mirrored real-world history, the Ozymandias could have done nothing at all and the world would have still entered a stage of global peace after the fall of the Soviet Union. According to the Watchmen movie, international peace is really just the absence of nuclear war. There is such a thing as negative peace, but this movie doesn't care about that. Whether or not the meaning of the movie's ending is a factually correct extrapolation of its own fictional world's history has nothing to do with whether or not its ending is logically consistent. Realism and logical consistency are two different things. You could argue that Adrian's plan would have failed soon after the movie's timeline, because the Soviet Union and the rest of the world would have blamed America for either creating Dr. Manhattan or turning him into an uncontrollable weapon. Depending on your view of world history, you might believe that, regardless of which country the world's military superpowers blame the supposed actions of Dr. Manhattan on, they would still have to band together to fight him as their one and only common enemy. On the other hand, you could believe that the world's superpowers are more likely to wage war against each other while working together to subdue or destroy Dr. Manhattan than they are to permanently establish peaceful relations with each other while working together to defend themselves against Dr. Manhattan. The willingness of the world's military superpowers to fight each other while working together to defeat Dr. Manhattan will be the subject of our upcoming video on the ideology of the Watchmen comic book. If the movie had, however, chosen to use the comic book's ending to make the story's plotline more consistent with its portrayal of Adrian's genetic engineering work on Bubastis, then such a decision would have brought about a potential plot hole. First of all, there would have been no specific reason for any of the world's major superpowers to assume that Dr. Manhattan had created those squids. Any major power looking for an opportunity to wage war against one of its rivals could conjure up a false conspiracy about how its key rival had orchestrated the squid attack. Whereas, the energy bombs would lead any government to assume that Dr. Manhattan had been behind the genocidal bombing of major cities across the world in the absence of any clear-cut evidence to the contrary. Having any government assume that Dr. Manhattan created the giant squids would, in fact, be a plot hole. 
because there would be no reason whatsoever for any government to assume that Dr. Manhattan was behind the giant squid attacks. Any events in a story that happens for no discernible reason is a plot hole, because such an event is a non sequitur. In logic, a non sequitur is a logical fallacy in which a deductive argument may have a true premise, but its conclusion is false because of a flaw in the logical structure of the argument. Secondly, there are only two logical outcomes to the giant squid attacks. If the world's major powers defeat the giant squids with their missile defense forces or with nuclear weapons, then the world peace that Ozymandias was trying to achieve would only be temporary, because Russia and the United States could go back to waging war against each other. Moreover, Russia and its allies could accuse the United States and its allies of creating the giant squids and vice versa. The existence of the squids could be used as an excuse by the United States and its allies to wage war against Russia and Russia's allies and vice versa. These two possible outcomes suggest that Ozymandias would increase rather than decrease the chances of nuclear war if he used giant squids instead of energy bombs to frame Dr. Manhattan for global genocide. The movie's use of energy bombs not only feels less contrived than the comic book's ending, it's also less likely to produce a plot hole. You could argue that the comic book was a satire of the superhero genre rather than a realistic critique of some of the most common superhero tropes, but that's beside the point. Number 6. After being arrested for the murder of Moloch, Rorschach should have been placed in a safer prison rather than the one prison where most of his enemies reside. This isn't a plot hole per se, but another plot contrivance. In Watchmen's decidedly irrational US prison system, no precautions were taken to ensure Walter Kovacs was not placed in the one prison where many of the inmates who he helped arrest and imprison happened to reside. A more realistic version of the US federal prison system might have sent Kovacs to a prison in which none of its inmates were criminals that he had arrested during his days as a vigilante. Of course, a Watchmen movie without bloodthirsty inmates trying to kill Kovacs is a lot less fun to watch. One way to get around this contrived plot point would be to have some of the criminals Kovacs helped arrest in his former life as a vigilante be situated in a penitentiary far from the one Kovacs is being held prisoner in, but use their complex criminal networks to offer a financial reward for Walter's murder. That would make the movie more realistic, but less satisfying to watch. Having Kovacs' fellow inmates want to kill him for money is much less compelling than having them want to kill him for revenge. One way to make this scene feel less contrived without sacrificing its emotional depth would be to have the vertically challenged crime lord be situated in another prison, but bribe his prison's warden and the warden of Kovacs' prison to have both himself and his revenge-hungry minions be transferred to Kovacs' prison. This would not only make the prison riot scene more realistic, but it would also make the crime boss a more compelling character. If you liked this video, please subscribe and share this video on social media, and consider donating to my Ko-Fi account.